Today, I'm gonna to be helping my girlfriend replace her CV axle on her 2010 Mazda 3. We're gonna see how well this goes. So Heather has never worked on a car before, so we're gonna start her off strong doing something that's not necessarily beginner uh, in any way, and we're gonna see how far she can get, and wherever she gets stuck, I'll obviously come in and help her out. So we're gonna be replacing the driver's side CV axle on her 2010 Mazda 3. Common symptoms of failure is either clicking sounds or if you see grease leaking from either end of the boot, that's a sign it's time to replace them. Now, obviously you can just replace the boot and grease, but once you start getting into it, it's actually cheaper to just buy the whole thing. So that's what we're gonna do today. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is jack the car up in the air, but we're gonna break the lugs free on the driver's side wheel because that's the only wheel that needs to come off. And Heather is gonna attempt that by herself. She's done this once before, so we'll see how it goes. So what you're gonna do is fit this over it so it's seated, and then you can pull the trigger and take the uh, each one off. Make sure it's all the way on it. Just slowly pull the trigger. All right, now hit it. <laughs> So now that the wheel is off, the next thing we're gonna do is start working on getting this tie rod end taken off the steering knuckle, and Heather's gonna do that. You want to, we're gonna bend these back like this, and now you're gonna try to pull this out of that. Pretty tough. Hard. Easy, easy does it. For those following along at home, it's extremely important to remember that if your tie rod end is stuck in the knuckle, do not hit it directly on top of the threads or you will 100% damage them and not be able to screw it back on. Ask me how I know. Instead, screw the castle nut back on top and hit the top of it as a last resort. Otherwise, PB blaster, patience, and hitting the side is your best friend. Next, we need to remove the sway bar link, which is held on by just one bolt at the top. Now just press it. Cool. Beautiful. That's out. Easy peasy. So now the next thing we're gonna need to do is remove the CV axle nut. And I believe it is a 32 millimeter. So put it on there. That's a sit. And then push it. Yeah, you're gonna need some force to do it. Boom. Just like that. Alrighty, so we are making some good progress. Everything, for the most part, is disconnected. The next thing we're gonna have to do is get the ball joint out of the steering knuckle. That's gonna be the difficult part. We can do it. Yep. 15 millimeter you want on both sides. I just wanna show you where it is. That's the nut you have to take off right here. And there's a screw on the other side. So you're gonna impact this off while holding the other side with a socket and a wrench. Not crazy, but. All right, well, we got off. So you're gonna come on this side, probably gonna have to sit on the floor. Actually, that's pretty easy. And you see that bolt? Yeah, push it through. Take, you gotta take it out. Cool, awesome. Now, the only reason this might look easy is because this is a new ball joint and I've done this about a dozen times before. But if this is your first time, then make sure to PB blast the top of the ball joint and use a long crowbar and maybe even a pickle fork to wedge the steering knuckle off the ball joint. You'll also need to push down on the control arm at the same time. Now it's time to separate the end of the CV axle from the hub. In order to do this, you just need to screw the nut back on and give it a light tap with a hammer just a few times and it should wiggle itself out.
All right, guys, so it is a new day and I wanna give you a quick update. Heather has pooped out on me. She doesn't wanna continue working on the car and that's fine. I honestly saw it coming. And also, this is a new day and the reason is because I had the wrong tool in order to remove the CV axle. We got all the way there and turns out I had the wrong tool, the special CV axle removal tool, and um, it just would not fit. And I'm gonna show you why in a second. So it's been a couple of days, I got the correct tool and I'm gonna show you that. And now I'm gonna tell you how we can proceed further. And hopefully we can get the CV axle out because it is leaking bad. Now I went ahead and I disassembled the uh, car a little bit more. Basically all I did was remove the rotor, brake and caliper. And I set the caliper over there because we're gonna have to remove the strut and the steering, uh, the steering knuckle because it's in the way because the new tool is this slide hammer. It's a five pound slide hammer and I have a 48 millimeter CV axle. And the problem is this barely fits on the car too, but we're gonna make it work as best we can in order to get this uh, disassembled. So let me show you really quickly the problem. Now, in order to remove the entire strut assembly, you need to obviously, we already have it off the ball joint here, and you have the CV axle out. The next thing you need to do is disassemble the brake line, which we already did to the caliper. And then it's as simple as unscrewing, which we already started, these three screws right here, which are 14 millimeter. So with the strut assembly out of the way, it gives us so much more room to kind of fish this tool, the slide hammer behind the CV axle. And then with just enough force, we can whack this out a few times. Now I've already got it out, but for those at home that are trying to follow along, um, I'm gonna kind of just demonstrate what that process looks like. Now, I don't know how it is for other models, but on this 2010 Mazda 3, you can see there is literally no room to get anything in there. Even with this piece right here, as you can see, I took it off. It can barely fit inside of this. Now, just for reference, I have already pulled it out. I've already got it out, but just to show you how literally impossible it is, it can barely fit in here. The transmission gets in the way. So what you do, and what I did was, I was able to wiggle just maybe an inch, you can see how much, maybe a half inch on each side of this, just around it enough where that I was able to get a little bit of leverage and pull it, and I'll show you what that looks like. Now you can see why we removed the strut because this is on such a weird angle because it can't actually sit fully behind the CV axle. It's able to fit just enough to get enough pressure behind it. And then hopefully on a few wax, you can actually keep pushing it in. But in order to actually center it, you have to crawl underneath like I did. And you can see how kind of off centered it is behind there, but that's enough where we can hopefully pull it out. You can see here how it is barely behind it because the transmission gets in the way, which is a pain in the butt. But we have just enough pressure touching the actual CV axle itself, but with enough pulls, it should come right off. Also a tip, make sure to leave some sort of catch pin underneath when you start pulling, because we should lose it just a tiny bit of transmission fluid. Basically. Just like that, we are out. There's the fluid, it's just a tiny bit. So surprisingly, this thing was still stuck in a little bit, but without this tool, it's pretty much impossible to do this at home without a lift. And you can see here, there's actually a rubber boot there. Now that looks good, that rubber seal for us, but I've seen some other videos of people needing to replace it or it pulling out with it. So just keep that in mind, but you can see all the transmission fluid leaking just a little bit. I'm gonna clean it off and clean all this gunk out. And then we're gonna put the new one in and uh, reassemble the car.
All right, so it's now time to reassemble everything back together. I bought TRQ. I'm sure everybody has seen 1A Auto. So I think they're very reliable. I know it's probably very uh, controversial as to go OEM or so on and so forth, used or rebuilt, whatever. My logic, and let me know for all the mechanics out there that watch this maybe, um, there's probably nothing wrong with this. It just needs to be rebooted, the new one. But when you start adding it up and what it would cost for me to buy the tools, the boots and everything like that, it's like 80, 90 bucks. When this is 80, 90 bucks already, so I was like, I might as well get a brand new aftermarket one because the OEM one's like five or $600. So we're gonna try this. We should be good to go. The reason I went uh, 1A Auto TRQ is because they have a lifetime warranty. So if this breaks again, we can just get a new one, unlike some of the other brands uh, that have one year, two year, three year warranties. Try to find one with, you know, a lifetime. I'll put the link to this down in the description below. But it is now time to uh, reassemble this bad boy back into the car. So I just plugged this right now so I could spray it, but we're gonna make sure this kind of mating surface is as clean as you can get. And then a key reminder here is when you put this in, there's a little locking ring here. Make sure the opening of the ring is down. It's facing down when you put it in. This way it clips into place, preferably. Kind of gonna have to play with it a little bit. And eventually, just like that, should lock in. So now we're locked into place and we can start to reassemble the uh, the suspension. First thing that goes back in is the strut assembly and steering knuckle. Now make sure when you put this back in to line the three bolts on top as close to how they were before as to not mess up your alignment. You should be able to see the outline on the strut tower of where the three bolts go. Once the three bolts are tightened, make sure to put anti-seize on the end of the CV axle to prevent this from getting stuck in the wheel hub. Then you can slide this in and put it back on the ball joint. Tighten the CV axle nut down to 200 foot pounds and crimp the end if you feel the need to. On goes the sway bar end link and ABS sensor mount. Then the ball joint bolt and nut to hold it in place. Next goes the tie rod end, castle nut, and cotter pin. And lastly goes the rotor, caliper bracket, pads, caliper, and brake line. With those reinstalled, you are officially done with your CV axle replacement. And just like that, we've replaced the CV axle on the driver's side for the 2010 Mazda 3 with help from Heather, my girlfriend. Obviously, I didn't think she would fully finish it out because it is a lot of work. It's definitely no beginner project, but lesson learned, maybe she'll be able to help us do some other stuff later on in some future videos. But if you like content like this, then definitely make sure to smash the like button, turn up post notifications, subscribe. And remember, if you have any questions on how I did this, or if you're curious about how to fix something on a Mazda 3 or your car, let me know down in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Oh my God, of course I shoot the straw out. Pull me closer.